In this video, I'm going over setting up DXVK and eSync for Linux. So DirectX VK or Vulkan compatibility layer is basically how you play DirectX games in Linux, um, at least natively or near native performance. So that compatibility layer allows you not to have to emulate or put a lot of load on your system that results in poor frame rates and just overall poor performance. So there's a couple caveats when it comes to DXVK in the setup. Um, I'm about to go into that in a second. Um, but you should know that DXVK pertains to DirectX 10 and DirectX 11. They're still working on DirectX 9 compatibility. Um, it's not quite there yet. So just know if you're playing an older game or one that pops into mind that still uses DirectX 9 is Path of Exile. Um, just know that DXVK, if it's running in DirectX 9, you won't really see any benefit from actually having it enabled. So now that you know what DXVK is, let's go ahead and talk about installation. Who can install this? How do you install it? Uh, if you go to this uh, GitHub article, which I will go ahead and put in the description below so you can easily find this and do it yourself with copy paste. Uh, it goes over what you need, whether you have an AMD card or an NVIDIA card, it kind of goes through these. Also, you need to make sure your GPU is compatible. If you've bought your GPU in the past year or two, chances are it is on this list. And I'll go ahead and pull this up for you just so you can kind of see uh, what, what to expect. Uh, most things in the past five years are going to be on this list. So no worries there. Uh, so go ahead and install this for your system. Arch, Ubuntu, uh, Gentoo. Yeah, you, you don't need to be watching this video if you're using Gentoo. Um, but yeah, no. Arch and Ubuntu are the main supported systems for DVXK. Uh, you could probably, or DXVK, you can probably do it on other systems. Just know you're going to have to actually build this. So you're not going to have a simple package install. That's why so many people use Ubuntu and Arch and why it's the most requested of all the OSs to run and why most people use them as their main run. However, if you're capable, you can go ahead and download this GitHub and compile it for you your uh, installer if you like and it's all right here in this link so that is dxvk and how you would install it in a nutshell uh, very easy if you're on ubuntu or arch obviously if you're not uh, you're going to have some fun building this whether or not it'll work on fedora and other things i can't actually speak to that because i haven't tried that yet uh, but that is dxvk and how to install it and get it running on your system so for setting up eSync, this actually reduces the overall overhead of Wine, and it's really a very cool feature. Uh, I've noticed really good bumps, almost doubling frame rates in some instances. So having eSync installed and configured almost on every game is like really, really important. Now, obviously, if you're launching from Steam, you're typically going to be using Proton, and a lot of these options I'm going over today is not of much relevance, um, but just know that you really need these two features to get optimal gaming experience in, in Linux. If, if you don't have DXVK and eSync for a lot of games, you're just going to have a really bad time. You're just not going to have much fun because of poor performance you're gonna go hey linux gaming sucks it just isn't quite there and really once you understand a lot of these intricacies you're gonna like just fall in love with it because now you don't have to deal with all the crap and bloat that windows 10 and windows 7 and all of that has when you take it down to linux uh, i've noticed my memory usage even on some like really high-end triple a titles we're talking only like four or five gigs worth of usage, including my system that I'm running. Now, obviously, I'm running like XFC and an Arch-based instance for this video, but um, it still is utilizing just very little memory. So I love gaming in Linux when I get good games. Uh, when I say good games, there's certain games that are buggy in Windows. That's just amplified when it gets put on Linux. So uh, I'll, in a later video, I'm going to actually go over that in my you know Windows games for Linux series. And I'm going to do a couple really buggy Windows games and put them in Linux just so you guys can see that. So be on the lookout for those videos.
So now that you know what eSync is, it's actually a very, very simple install, uh, considerably more simple than DXVK. Uh, it, all you're doing is just changing this variable, the default no limit in here. And all you're doing is changing it in the system.conf if you're using systemd and user.conf. Uh, also, you need to change it in the limits.conf under etc security. And all you're doing in this file is just changing it to look like this. And then in here, you're just adding or uncommenting this default limit no file to equal this value. So let me go ahead and show that to you guys real fast. So we're gonna use nano for both of these. And we'll start with the security because this is applicable to all systems, not just those running system D. So we'll just do a sudo nano etc security and then limits.conf. And from here, you can actually go all the way down and you'll see almost this entire uh, files usually commented out. And all I did was add those two lines above the EOF here. Um, you'll see the Titus, uh, both hard and soft, no file, and set to this new variable. So very simple to set there. And then once you've set it there, go ahead and also set it in the ETC system D and then um, the system.conf. And from here, you'll notice almost every single one of these variables is commented out commented out that's what the hash sign is above it or before it or the pound sign and all I did was just add this at the end now there is this variable somewhere in there I'm sure uh, but I was just like forget it I'm not even gonna hunt it down and I just paste it at the end and the same goes for the user.conf file so um, just come in here go to the user.conf and you'll see it at the end as well so uh, after editing both those files, you guys should be good to go. And then I usually just reboot the system. Um, I'm sure there's a service you can restart, but at the end of the day with the solid state, it takes 30 seconds to reboot. So I just rebooted and it accepted my changes and that's it. And that's all there is to DXVK and eSync in Linux. So one more thing I wanted to show you guys is the actual configuration and what it would look like in an actual game. So let's go ahead and use uh, we'll launch Lutris and I'll just do a configure on Fallout 76 because this game is external. It's not part of Steam or anything like that. And all I do is go configure, runner options, make sure DXVK is enabled, and then also make sure eSync is also enabled. And then that's it, just click save and you're done. So that's the basic configuration of both. And with this, you guys will be able to get so many more games running in your Linux.